everybody, welcome to my homestead and welcome to my channel. In this video, I want to go over a comment by Brent talking about President Benson and then also talking about generations because he pointed out something that I think is actually pretty interesting when it comes to generations. Uh, he is responding to the video that I did called The Rising Generation. This is really it. Uh, which, for me, it's one of my favorite videos that I've done. If you haven't seen it, make sure to go check it out. But uh, if you haven't already, please make sure to subscribe, like this video if you end up liking it. And make sure to leave your thoughts and your opinions down in the comments below. And also make sure to share this with anyone that's interested in these kind of things. So let me just read his comment, okay? He says, I would like to add just a couple of thoughts. Great video. Thank you. We know that the baby, junior, the baby boomer generation will not all pass away uh, until all be fulfilled since we identified them as the generation that is from the fig tree. Now, if you, if you don't know what he's talking about, I'll put a link below. We, we've done a video about uh, what's called the fig tree generation. This is something that I learned about. It's not so much really a concept within the church, uh, our church officially, but it is a concept with other watchers that are of other Christian faiths. Uh, and just briefly, it has to do with Israel becoming a nation again and how some interpret that as being like the fig tree um, bringing forth leaves again. And once you see the, the fig tree, uh, then that generation will not pass away until all these things come to pass, meaning all the things that have to happen before the second coming, uh, according to prophecy. Okay, so... And I, and I tend to, I, I think that there is something to that. I'm not going to say that it's official church doctrine, but I, myself, I think that there's something there. Okay. I was in a meeting with President Benson when he said my generation was a chosen generation, Generation X. Now we see that the millennials have also been called, and now the Generation Z uh, have been identified as the last generation. Uh, <clears throat> well, and I don't know if it, they, I, I don't know if it's been called the last generation, but it, it certainly feels that way, uh, unless you unless you have like a, a source or a quote for that. But okay, so all these generations are going to witness the second coming. Uh, it, it would seem, yes. All have their own purpose. My children are both millennials and Generation Z. I also have four grandchildren that I don't know what the title of their generation is, but are also a part. My parents, who are of the silent generation, will also be part as they come from heaven to meet us in the clouds and other generations before that, uh, be <laughs> because they'll, they'll have been passed away and uh, they're going to be resurrected. So it'll, it'll be a little bit different than us, but it, it will be a great day. Um, a big family reunion, yes. Just another thought I just had. <clears throat> I'm starting to think after listening all, after listing all these generations that there are that are coming together that Adam Ande Amen may happen after the first second coming, uh, and Enoch comes from heaven with his whole city. Hmm. Yeah, see, this is something it's hard for me to nail down exactly. The t I mean, I don't think, I don't think that we can, uh, the, like the timing of Adam on Dayam and how quickly things are going to happen after that. Um, we just have to stay open-minded, but I, I can see what you're saying here and, uh, we'll just have to see, we'll just have to see, but that's a really good thought. Okay. So, and then I want to read this by Leah Carter. She responded to his comment. She says, uh, you made some great observations. I'm 40 years old and considered a bridge between Gen X and Millennials. I have four children, one of which is Gen Z, and my three youngest are called Generation Alpha. Yes, and, and I think I, I actually talked about this a long time ago, uh, earlier on in the channel. I, I think the way it goes, it's, it's going to be Generation Alpha, and then Beta, and then so on. Okay, I guess using Greek letters. I think that name is so fitting as they will be the strongest souls the Lord has ever, has sent thus far. And, you know, I've thought about that too. It's interesting that, you know, it, it basically, it goes X, Y, Z, 
Okay, millennials, that's the same as Generation Y. That's like an alternate name for the millennials. So it goes X, Y, Z, and then it starts over with alpha, beta, and then so on. It, it looks like that's how, how it's going to be. So uh, not that the people who name these generations dictate anything, really, uh, as far as the second coming goes, but it, it does seem to kind of correspond. You know, it's like Generation Alpha you know, they might be kind of like possibly considered the first generation of the millennium in, in you know, certain ways of thinking about it and speaking. Um, okay, so I wanted to actually go back and find these talks by President Benson. You know, a, a lot of us already know about this one because Jody Stoddard did a video about this, uh, part, one, part of her video series. Um, I, I, I tend to, I like her timeline. I'm not like 100% with like everything, I don't think, but I think she put together a really good uh, timeline. And it also, it kind of woke me up. I think that, you know, whether she has everything 100% right or not, uh, isn't so important as the effect that I think that she had on a lot of people. I think that she has a lot right. I, I know that there's probably a couple other things uh, I think are not quite right, but like I'm not going to get into like a thing uh, with her. I think that she's great. Um, but she brought this up. This is the first time that I heard about it was on her series that she has. Um, if you haven't check her out like go check it out just like keep an open mind see what she has to say i think periodically she kind of updates her timeline but anyway so there's this talk here it's called prepare yourselves for the great day of the lord and this was given at byu on the 14th of april 1981 okay so byu Keep that in mind, because I have another one here that's in California, which which I came across. And who knows, maybe there's other ones. But I just want to read a few of the key things in this talk. Okay, the people of every generation, I suppose, see the time in which they live as being exceptional. The truth of the matter is that you do live in a most exceptional time, exceptional time in the history of the world. Now, keep in mind, this is the 80s, okay? You young people will see events transpire which were promised from the beginning of the world. Prophets of old have seen your days and rejoiced in them. And yet, you will face challenges and circumstances, the severity of which has been unparalleled in generations past. Uh, for this, you must be prepared. And frankly, I think that we're seeing a lot of that right now. Okay, fulfillment of prophecy. He, he, he talks about Christ when he prophesied the destruction of the temple, right? Um, and it shall come to pass that this generation of Jews shall not pass away until every just desolation which I have told you concerning them shall come to pass. Thus you see, in just four decades following the crucifixion, the nation, the city, and the temple were all destroyed. Now, Jody Sauter, she makes the point that this talk being given in 1981, you know, did President Benson have the foresight or was he given the general time uh, to which, like, if you take this talk and when it was given, you know, 40 years later, well, th that was last year in 2021. And I'm not going to fault her or that observation for you know, the second coming not having happened last year. I think that where it's a kind of a time frame, it's a zone. I, I could see that this could be a, a, a type of 40 year warning, you know, give or take five years or something like that. Um, you know, I mean, you got to take it with a grain of salt, but it's just, it's interesting. It's interesting because he's talking about this generation of uh, Gen X and, you know, he's like, hey, remember when Christ, remember when he gave kind of a 40-year prophecy? Well, let's talk about you guys. So he could be given that kind of a, of a warning. He talks about uh, the time of the Gentiles and how after the Gentiles have rejected it, that's when the times of the Gentiles will be 
um, completed. And, and it seems from my own study, there's kind of like two takes on the times of the Gentiles. One is Jerusalem, the actual city being trodden underfoot by the Gentiles, which it, it really it no longer is because Israel has become a nation again. And, and after the Six Day War, they've um, uh, taken the, the entire city, both the west and the east side of the city. Uh, but then there's this spiritual kind of times of the Gentiles. And according to President Benson, uh, that will end after the Gentiles have rejected the gospel. Okay. Now, we've been talking about that a lot. We've been talking about the Mor the angel Moroni on top of the Salt Lake Temple dropping his trumpet. And some of us have speculated, and it is just speculation, that that could be a sign that either the times of the Gentiles is over or we're getting very close to, to that time. Uh, it, it does seem like that... That happening in March of, of 2020 was an act of God. It was an earthquake. And I've done a video about that too. So you can go back and watch that if you'd like. Okay. We are not witnessing the fulfillment of the... Okay. Are we not witnessing the fulfillment of these signs today in 1981? The gospel is being extended to all nations which permit our missionaries to penetrate their countries. Now, if you watched my video about the the European devotional that just happened, President Nelson said that the gospel is in all nations right now, that it has been taken to all nations. So there's kind of a an interesting contrast between the President Benson years, where we still had this problem of missionaries not being able to, able to penetrate countries. And you could say that that's still kind of the case today, but you don't hear President Nelson saying, oh yeah, we still, there's still countries that uh, missionaries need to go to. Uh, according to what he said during the devotional, the gospel has been taken to all nations. And maybe he's saying that because of the internet, Maybe he's saying that because of all these uh, uh, all these immigrants coming from different countries, like escaping war and other things. There's been a lot of migration happening over the last 10, 20 years, right? So, and I think that a lot of that is the Lord's doing. So, I just want to point that out. You know, we're, we, we don't see too much of this talk anymore among general authorities, do we? Do you, do you remember the last time that a general authority has made mention of the fact that there's still countries that we can't get into? I, I, I don't remember uh, any time recently. So that particular prophecy, you know, going to all the nations of the world, uh, the gospel being preached in all the world, that very well could be complete. You know, in, in just not in the way that we think, not in the traditional way of actually having missionaries in the actual borders of certain countries, but because of the internet and other um, circumstances. Okay, let's move on down. Okay, the preparation. Saints of Zion, do you realize we are living in the days of the fulfillment of these signs and wonders? You are among those who will see many of these prophecies fulfilled. Just as certain as was the destruction of the temple at Jerusalem and the scattering of the Jews, so shall these words of the Savior be certain to your generation. Generation X. We know not the day nor the hour of his coming, but of this you may feel assured. You stand close to the great day of the Lord. In his words of modern revelation, we say to you, seek the face of the Lord always. And then there's a reference to DNC 101.38. Skipping down, this preparation must consist of more than just casual membership in the church. You must learn to be guided by personal revelation and the counsel of the living prophet so you will not be deceived. Now, where have we heard that before? They've really, really been uh, concentrating on this recently receiving personal revelation in order to not be deceived. In fact, that was like a big topic 
uh, during the European devotional that just happened just a few days ago about following the counsel of the living prophet and also receiving personal revelation in order to not be deceived. And we've also heard President Nelson, when he said that time is, is running out, uh, before he said that, he said he was calling out to those who had distanced themselves from the church or who have not really sought to know for themselves and gain a testimony of Christ and, and the restored church. So it's interesting that here we have President Benson back in 1981 uh, essentially saying the same thing. But what we're seeing now is that this message right here that he's saying is being amplified and it's being talked about way, way more now than it was back then. Okay. Uh, down here, we have every confidence that you, the rising generation, will not falter. I repeat, you are valiant spirits reserved for this exceptional time. And that's more of what President Nelson was saying to the European saints, specifically talking about the rising generation and their preparation in the, the pre-mortal world uh, to come specifically right now for the very purpose of preparing for the second coming and gathering scattered Israel. Uh, so it's just, it's more of the same talk, right? Um, now, the rising generation, that was one of the phrases that I put on the tracker where I track how many conference talks mention specific phrases. And I decided since we're looking at President Benson right here, I wanted to look at the President Benson years between 1985 to 1993. Now, that talk was given in 1981, so President Kimball was the prophet at the time. But look at this dark red right here in 1981. This column right here where there's this dark red and the number 11, this is the last days column, okay? So times that the last days have shown up in uh, conference talks. And, and you can see, you know, this is toward the end of this like really hot period right here of the 70s, early 80s, late 60s. Boy, boy, oh boy, was there a lot of talk about the second coming uh, back then, right? Uh, going up until uh, about 1981. And then things cool down a little bit. And then during President Benson's years, it kind of heats up again. Not to the extent of the 70s. But you can see here we do have a red. There's a bunch of yellows. Uh, we have some oranges. Uh, now this, this second column right here, this is the term second coming. And you can see here at the very end of his presidency and at the very beginning, we have two yellows and then we have solid green right here all throughout the middle. Now, there's an interesting spike in this column of three. This column is rising generation. Okay, so he just talked about the rising generation in this talk in 1981. Right. And look at this. 1981. Now, this is not a conference talk. This is a talk to BYU. So, in conference that year, the rising generation was brought up two times. And then during his presidency, it's brought up a couple times, but uh, especially in this year, in 1990, which for some reason there's also a red for the last days. So, something was going on here in 1990. Uh, across the board, uh, there's kind of a little bit of a spike, relatively speaking. So, and then we see a bunch of greens right here where it's kind of surrounded by blues otherwise. So, it seems that President Benson's time, here's some more greens right here. It seems like President Benson's time, you know, although it wasn't the, the hottest time in terms of second coming talk, um, you know, it was kind of like a secondary, a secondary time. If this was like a primary time during the 70s and then now during our day, the last like five, six years, well, President Benson's presidency was kind of like a secondary um, level of 
talk and excitement about the second coming. Now, the rising generation, it really, really takes off starting in 2006. But, um, I mean, that was like the very start, but then it really starts to get boosted in 2009. And ever since that time, that it seems like that's just been all the talk is the rising generation. Okay. So, so it's interesting. Okay. Now there's this talk here. Uh, well, it's not the full talk. This actually, it, I'm not sure what this is. Let's see. It's from the end sign. Okay. So it's like a little kind of like a news article in the end sign. And the title of it is you are a marked generation. President, President Benson tells students. Now this is different. This is in 1986. It looks like 1986. Well, actually, let me see. Let me click over here. No, sorry. 1987. Let's look over here on the tracker. 1987. So for the last days and also for the for um, second coming, th this is kind of like the hotter period of his presidency is kind of toward the beginning as far as those terms go. And then also, here you go. In 1986, there's one uh, rising generation. So, okay. So, 1987, this time, instead of BYU in Utah, this is in Anaheim, California, Convention Arena. And he says, make no mistake about it, you are a marked generation. That strikes me because in this recent devotional in Europe, this is exactly what President Nelson said. He said, make no mistake about it. And I have to wonder, you know, is that kind of a nod or is that like uh, a reference of President Benson. Does he remember President Benson saying this? Make no mistake about it. You are a marked generation. He didn't say uh, you are a marked generation, but he, he was talking about the specialness of this generation of Europeans. Okay. And then there's a quote. He says, there has never been a more expected... Okay, there has never been more expected of the faithful... Sorry, let me zoom in. There has never been more expected of the faithful in such a short period of time than there is of us, he said. Never before on the face of this earth have the forces of evil and forces of good been so well organized. And uh, you haven't seen anything yet back in 87. Uh, let's see, was there anything else here? Okay, at the end of this article, he says... You are a royal generation. Rise up, O oh youth of Zion. You hardly realize the great potential that lies within you. Okay, and then, uh, so, I just wanted to point this out. I wanted to kind of go over Pre uh, President Benson's talks here. And then, so he's talked to Generation X, and then we have President Nelson, talking to the millennials or Gen generation Y where he we've gone over this too in a couple different videos he explicitly tells us because I'm a millennial I, I'm kind of also like a bridge between generation X and the millennials but I'm more well I, I'm pretty much right on the the cusp or in between but he basically says that the millennials are are literally going to be living in the millennium and not because they're going to be resurrected, that they're going to like live to live in the millennium. So we have generation X, generation Y, and then here, uh, hope of Israel in, in 2018, uh, we have this generation. I, I should have looked it up. I'm not sure what generation this would have been, but it's, Whatever, I guess this is probably Generation Z. Uh, you, you, you tell me, I don't know. But, and then we have also President Eyring talking to basically the same group when he's talking to this. Well, he was talking more broadly. I guess he was talking to uh, baby boomers as well as Generation X and Y, as well as their, their children. So grandmothers, mothers, and granddaughters. So he was talking to a pretty wide range of people, which I, I would imagine would en encompass the baby boomers, maybe even before, you know, because grandmother, that's kind of a, you know, 
he could you could encompass you know great grandmas maybe I don't know he said grand grandmothers mothers and daughters so it's fascinating this is fascinating talk because I don't think that you can find anything else like this before uh, these talks you know talking about these generations specifically like calling them out right it's fascinating stuff okay well that's it for this video. Um, you'll have to let me know what you think, or if you have any additional information, put it in the comments below. Uh, I, I do know somewhere, I tried to find it, but somewhere, like, I don't know if it was like a general conference talk or if it was some kind of whatever, but somebody made reference to like back in the, like the twenties, the 1920s. Somebody said that there are, there are those in this congregation that will witness the second coming and that. President Nelson is within that generation, so if you know what I'm talking about, please let me know so I can look it up, and then I'll probably do another video to highlight that. But anyway, uh, just let me know what you think in the comments below. If you haven't already, please make sure to subscribe, like this video if you liked it. Make sure to um, share this with anyone that finds this stuff interesting, and I'll talk to you guys later.